Yeah, it looks live to me. Yep. So welcome to another edition of Lock and Load. I got my revolver out today because I want to be a cowboy, baby. Um, we got a lot of stuff to talk about. Squib is out um, on Lock and Load. Sorry, as soon as it popped on there, it did that. <laughs> I didn't even have a chance to mute it. All right. <laughs> ah! <laughs> crazy, crazy lady from Oklahoma. Um, I told you. Oh, also known as Oily. Um, so hopefully she gets her external sound under control. And um, I, got I got it. You got it? I got uh, it. So uh, all kinds of crazy news, and uh, the main topic I wanted to talk about was carriers too big to fail, but um, a lot of other news. So we'll start out with a little bit of Second Amendment news. I mean, of course, the first thing is um, obviously Dennis Rodman is traveling to North Korea today, and he'll be there tomorrow. So he's he's the only contact we have that the the, the fate of the world depends on whether there will be a new World War Three or not is Dennis Rodman. So. That's the state of Father God help us all. <laughs> God help God help Dennis Rodman. <laughs> oh, Dennis is crazy enough he'd get along with that short little crazy dude. Me? I would have a hard time holding my tongue. Well um Hey I just I just, you know. I don't know what to make of the world anymore. It's gone completely bonkers. Um, you know, and of course you have the wrath of Khan over in London, a stand, they call it. Um, that boy, Pierce Morgan schooled him. I saw a video of Pierce Morgan schooled uh, uh, the mayor of London. He, he basically said, okay, 400 people went to Syria from England, fought with ISIS, fought against even British troops, and then they let them back in, and you aren't even having the police follow them or anything. And the London mayor of London says, "We don't have the budget for it." Four hundred. This is four hundred people that ISIS fighters that they know are ISIS fighters that used to be from the UK. They had passports saying they were UK citizens, and they came back from Syria, and they're not bothering to follow them because they don't have the money for that. <laughs> really. And Pierce Morgan is, what the, you know, uh, <laughs> first yeah. of all, you've got Pierce Morgan, so, you know, that's that's a problem, but if, at least he's not as dumb as the mayor of London. Uh, anyway, uh, so I want to get on to the Second Amendment news. Uh, I do want to introduce uh, the panel, Oily Prepper from Oklahoma. I'll say hello. Hello, everybody. Hey, Jay hey. Watts. And Jesse James over from Gun Channels. The man, the man with the Mikey Hartman Generation 2 or 3 optic that with no remote yet. What's up with your remote on that thing? What's How come you haven't got the remote yet? Once again, they're not released yet. Oh. I guess the you only person that really has released. them is yeah. uh, Mr. Mikey Hartman himself. <sighs> that has been such vaporware ever since I did the report on it. You know, and uh, as long as people don't blame me, <laughs> you know, it's not my fault that it's been vaporware. You know, I mean, when they, it's called vaporware for software, but it's like vapor hardware, I guess, when it's an optic and they promise that it will be released. And they release the optic, but not with the remote that's supposed to make it really cool. And you said you were saying it had a problem with the uh, shut, with the uh, uh, automatic shut off or something. Oh, no, there's no problem with it. It's just that there's two options, either 10 seconds or 10 minutes. And apparently, to me, 10 seconds just isn't long enough to stay on if you're actually going to be using it for uh, any type of, uh, I guess, seriousness, in my opinion. So, for instance, if you're looking down a set of flight of stairs, I don't think you want the sight to go off within 10 seconds when it's below 30 degree angle. I don't want my optic to, to ever go off in a combat zone. I mean, you know... I if I'm not in a combat zone, I don't care. But if I'm in a combat zone, you know, I don't no, really just... want it to go off. I mean, the mine, mine, it doesn't, it doesn't automatically turn back on when you make a. I know they, they were, the, this version two was supposed to have some kind of 
you know, if you make a combat movement only, it'll turn on and not just like a nothing movement. Well, that whole thing is all dependent on, uh, like I said, degrees and angles, like 30 degrees. So basically, if you were to point the gun straight forward, if you were to rotate the gun left or right 30 degrees after 10 seconds or 10 minutes, it'll turn off. Or if you point the gun up or down like 30 or 45 degrees, it'll turn off either after 10 seconds or 10 minutes. But there is another option to actually just have on for straight time, so it just never turns off till the battery dies. Okay. Um... The closest I've ever been to a combat zone was Walmart on a good Friday or on the day the Black Friday. Black Friday. So yeah. Well, uh, you should see Walmart. Up. You should see Walmart when a, there's a hurricane bearing down on Hawaii. It's really a combat zone. It gets crazy. All I'll the bet. spam and rice gets, goes missing well, first thing. <laughs> and and you know, but if you go, I I, I went to like. Uh, Oh, great. My Firefox is messing up again. Um, if you go, to, I went up to Safeway and there was no panic there, but everybody just and their brother piles into Walmart. And there's a Safeway like, you know, 500 yards up the street and nobody goes to that because they think it costs too much more, but it really doesn't, you know. I mean, and it's like there was plenty of rice and spam there, but Walmart was out, you know, it just, it's like a absolute madhouse at Walmart. Everybody just piles into Walmart. You know, I wasn't at Costco. I imagine it's much the same. You know, everybody just buys, you know, 20 pound bags of rice. Now I've seen, you know, I, I watched, um, there's a few videos on the internet, like, like called, uh, they're titled, uh, like if you do a search for, you are only 90 days away from anarchy or no, it wasn't that. You're nine meals away from anarchy, nine meals away from anarchy. Yeah, and, and you know, there's there's a guy talking about. He, well, you could tell he's drinking coffee and showing pictures of all these people that don't have starving people that don't even have food. You know, and while he's he, he just you can sit here and drinking coffee, you know, and it's just there's something wrong about that. But yeah, it's like for a twenty pound, you can go to Costco and buy a you know twenty or fifty pound bag of rice, you know, for whatever twenty bucks. But people in other nations kill for that kind of amount of food. They literally kill each other over that much because it's that hard. it's not it's hard to obtain and people die without it. So um, anyway, moving on to like Second Amendment stuff real quick. Um, we my Firefox doesn't completely shut down. Um, once again, in the Supreme Court SCOTUS blog Peruta case, nothing happened. <laughs> they they keep scheduling. Um, uh, you know, we just they keep posting that they redistribute distribute all the materials of the amicus briefs for a conference that usually they don't even attend, you know, uh, every week they, you know, so which they did again and, and they rescheduled another one for the 15th. Uh, and of course, uh, who knows the judges don't show up, they can't have a conference. So it just gets rescheduled. And it's like I said on the every second matter show, uh, this month, um, it's, uh, when they had the, the guest from the firearms policy center on, uh, it's like watching paint dry, waiting for them to do something on this. So we can only hope they pick it up. Um, good news, uh, checking out Gun Owners of America announced that the Concealed Carry Reciprocity Act of 2017 is ranked 14th in the number of co-sponsors out of more than 2,700 bills in Congress. House Resolution 38, introduced by Representative Richard Hudson of North Carolina, would allow eligible uh, concealed carriers to carry firearms across the country. According to GOA, this bill is in the 99th percentile of all legislation in the 115th Congress with 195 um, co-sponsors. Uh, Rep Representative Hudson credited the Gun Owners of America as a driving force behind the surge of co-sponsors. So a lot, a lot of, quote, a lot of that success has to do with grassroots organizations like Gun Owners of America pushing to get more co-sponsors, um, let's see. Eric Pratt pointed to grassroots activists as the reason the bill is a success, uh, although it hasn't been passed yet. But they got sure have, have a they have they're trying trying to get over two hundred co-sponsors. I hope that thing gets passed. Anyway, okay, got that out of the way. Um, let's see if I could screen share this. If Dusty ever makes it in here today, um, 
we had been talking last week about um, building tank traps with his backhoe on his farm, but it, it occurred to me, another idea occurred to me that would be just as discouraging for any kind of v, v, uh, defense against a vehicular attack. The, these Czech hedgehogs that, that they deployed on the, the, the Nazis deployed on the uh, Atlantic Wall, you know, on Normandy, for example, yeah. they work. And so he could build a few of these. And if, it, it, you know, if, if, if they, if they, if somebody was in a, some kind of Bradley fighting vehicle or any armored vehicle and they, they came, they were robbing local farms, which was the scenario that we put out uh, as a, as why he should dig a tank trap. Uh, if they came across a, ha a farm and it was like, you know, surrounded by hedgehogs, they would probably just move on to the next farm you know, and figure this place is fortified. Uh, and, uh, you know, also you, they could be used to funnel a vehicle into a trap. Uh, but um, these are steel and they can be made, uh, but they're like 500 pounds or 400 pounds after you build them out of steel. Um, and, you know, they littered these one of the, as one of the, along the coast on the Norm of Normandy, which uh, had the anniversary up on June 6th this month. Uh, so, anyway, there's a bunch of pictures of them. I uh, just Googled it. So, so Dusty, build yourself some hedgehogs. <laughs> there you All go. Right. There you go. Right. Um, and uh, let's see. I was going to see if I can get the carrier thing. A anybody else got anything important to add before I start babbling about uh Aircraft carriers? <laughs> I don't. You don't? Okay. Um, okay. I know you got a new Berkey water filter, but we can talk about that after, I guess. Um, <laughs> well, I haven't put it all together yet, so I can't really give a um, review of it, but I will post a video when I do because we have country water from the well and while we don't have to deal with chlorine and stuff like that i do have to deal with high mineral content which can be great for you but i just think gross looking at the bottom of my glass and seeing a bunch of little translucent floaties in the bottom so i <laughs> want to get rid of some of that so i'll do a comparison of both okay um, firefox is messing up on me again um i just wanted to show you as people what I was showing earlier. Um, this is what I picked up at Costco. It's not that expensive, aqua sauna. It, it, it filters out chlorine, you know, so if you need, if you want to use pool water from up, it'll filter out the chlorine. Uh, and um, so there it is. Um, it, it was really inexpensive. Like, uh, let's see, this is uh, one filter lasts for 80 gallons. You can get replacement filters for these off the internet. Uh, so this two bottles is, uh, um, you know, 80 times 160 gallons out of just these two filters here. You know, um, that's not bad. It'd be interesting to see those bottles, to, like the water from those bottles are filtered to be tested right. with like a chlorine kit. Yeah, well, they're, they're Costco and they're cheap, 20 bucks. It says maximum filtration, mi minimal effort. Excessively engineered to provide instant, healthy, professional grade filtration on the go. So, are you going to do a video of you going down to the pool and filling one up and then drinking one of it? No, there's too many children that like in that pool all the time. <laughs> and people oh, have come on. people, adults that like to mess around in the hot tub. <laughs> yeah, I hate it when I go down there and there's just kids screaming all the time. I, I got like a third of the way there and there were just kids screaming and I said, you know what, I'll, I'll come back some other day, you know, um, cause I go there to try and lower my blood pressure and de-stress, but, um, okay, so let's see, are carriers too big to fail? So uh, this is an article off of uh, the National Interest uh, magazine. Um, I don't know if I'm going to be able to read it all to you because Firefox is not being happy today. 
Uh, various defense pundits, scholars, and journalists have spent a considerable amount of digital ink debating the various threats to America's carrier fleet while avoiding a more central question. In the cliche phrase of our time, are carriers too big to fail? Clausewitz tells us, quote, war is a, the continuation of politics by other means, unquote. Is there any political situation of such gravity that losing a carrier would be deemed an acceptable risk? In other words, how expendable are the carriers? To answer this question has large implications for the tactical and strategic options available to U.S. policymakers. Total security from all risk is impossible. The aircraft carrier is not invulnerable to attack. The new Ford uh, class U.S. aircraft carrier will be a floating home to over 4,000 sailors and comes in at a hefty price tag over $12 billion. In the light of the development and proliferation of anti-access slash area denial weaponry, uh, does this enormous investment of human resources narrow U.S. tactical and strategic options? What are the implications of, this, of the sinking of a U.S. carrier? All right. Uh, over 4,000 American soldiers died during the recent eight-and-a-half-year Iraq uh, war. These casualties played a large role in uh, extensive domestic opposition to the conflict. Imagine for a moment that a single, similar number of sailors perish in less than an hour. Such an event would be a national catastrophe and would likely create enormous political pressure to end combat operations. Such ca catastrophic scenario is characteristic of naval warfare. In his book, Sea Power, Naval Strategist Jeffrey Till tells us that, quote, the nature of forces engaged in maritime operations are expensive, hard to replace, and even the smallest units represent a sizable investment in human resources whose loss can be sudden and instantaneous and very hard for publics and governments to bear, unquote. And the U.S. public is not conditioned to enduring high amounts of casualties. The last time commensurate numbers of U.S. troops died uh, and a single military engagement was in the 1950s during the Korean War. Knowing that, what would the U.S. reaction be if a U.S. carrier w were attacked and sunk? Uh, how it could happen. To those who doubt such scenario, scenario will ever unfold, consider this. Nothing is truly invulnerable. The sinking of the Titanic and the Bismarck, as well as the passing of the battleship era, can all attest to that. Consider the various threats from Beijing uh, area denial missile arsenal, uh, specifically the DF-21D anti-ship ballistic missile, uh, and they list a few other anti-ship cruise missiles. Uh, <clears throat> the International Institute for Strategic Studies uh, Global Defense Assessment of 2013 states that the DF-21 had gone through limited testing and has been deployed to the second artillery uh, the branch of Chinese military that controls its nuclear and conventional missile arsenal. You know, we, we talked about this at one point, you know, and Squibb had been saying that, you know, it's really hard to sink a carrier. Uh, a torpedo won't do it. A few hits from, a, you know, a ship won't do it. A missile won't do it. So I'm assuming they're talking nuclear, nuclear weapons, you know, and still it would have to be almost a direct hit, which is hard to do because, I mean, not only does it have defenses, it, you know, it has, uh, you know, it, it, it's just, it's a very hard target, and it, it's, it's hard, even in this age of satellite technology, I mean, satellites can be shot down, and the ship is always on the move. It's never going to be in one place. You know, it's not a stationary target like those Chinese islands that they built. You know, they never move. The carrier always moves. So, unless it's in port. Uh, so, uh, let's see, matching it for the national interest brings up the point that simple math weighs in the favor of the attacker when it comes to anti-ship weapons. The Navy has a total of 30 ships equipped with state-of-the-art Aegeus ballistic missile defense systems. Even if Washington utilized every Aegeus uh, BDM uh, ballistic missile defense equipped ship from across the globe, there's a limited amount of interceptors America could bring to the fight. American ships would be sitting ducks once they ran out. 
Worse, thousands of such missiles can be expended and not even come close to approaching the costs required to field a fleet capable of taking on the U.S. Navy. Basically, what I think is that it, since it's a moving target, it would have to be a lucky shot, <laughs> you know, because, um, you know, missiles can, can be jammed. Uh, and But, you know, they are right. Losing a carrier would be like precipitate a nuclear war because yeah, I think it would require a nuclear weapon to take one out. Uh, I don't think conventional weapons would work. Um, So. Oh, no. Um, if you really think about it, we I believe we lost two carriers in World War II. They were, that was World War II. That was, and. Um, World so we're two or World War. It doesn't really matter if it's World War or not. If you toss enough stuff at it, balance, something's going to get through. It wasn't just one airplane that took down the carrier. It was waves of them. Whether it be waves of airplanes coming and bombing or waves of missiles coming in and flying through the air, and sooner or later, something's going to happen. Yeah, but I, I, I think that warfare has changed dramatically uh, since, you know, World War II, and so has the carriers are, are different animals than they used to be. Um, they're not as easy to sink. They don't have wood flight decks. Uh, and um, there's a bunch of watertight compartments, you know, and, and putting a hole in the ship isn't, you know, with a torpedo isn't going to really sink it. You know, it might slow it down. It will probably won't even slow it down, you know, unless you hit it in the propellers. That's, that's one of those hard things to say until it actually happens. The best way for a torpedo to sink down a ship isn't actually for the torpedo to hit the actual ship. For the actual torpedo to explode underneath the ship, in order to cause that uh, displace of guess water and shockwave below the uh, below the actual hull. Yeah, if that's how it worked in in you know Atlantic, the Germans got the ship. You know, but those were merchant ships, not um, uh, naval military vessels for the most part. Uh, I think they they did sink a few military ships with uh, yeah, torpedoes that exploded under. Um, but they were like destroyers. So they weren't like you know modern aircraft carriers. Yeah, hey, they could if you crack the hull, the ship is going to sink. <laughs> There's no doubt, um, you know. But um, I think they aren't. Uh, I know that subs are a big thing in China. But I think the the biggest threat would be you know from you know this missile technology you know uh, proliferating you know to Iran or other country other rich you know countries that can afford to pay for ridiculous weapons and who are crazy enough to use them. Let's see if I can. I can't even. Firefox is just screwing up on me big time. <laughs> I, I rebooted once earlier today. Um, so the other thing I wanted to say with you know, so the, the whole point though is big, too big to fail. Is that the investment of one of these carriers is like you know huge amount of money and plus in the human lives that are on it. If you lose four thousand sailors, I think. You know, America would demand like you know some kind of drastic action. You know. Uh, uh, yeah, <laughs> I know if my husband, son, daughter, sister was on there, I'd want I'd want some serious action taken. Yeah, D translation means you know nuclear war. So, uh, which is you know. Well, I'd hope not nuclear war, but I'd sure want to find out. Who did it and get get um, them taken care of? Yeah, that's the whole nature. It's like this asymmetric warfare that we're facing now. Um, uh, like, look at London. We were just talking about London at the start of the show. Uh, those those people that did that knife attack in the center of London with a, a van and a knife, that's complete asymmetric threat, and they used London's own system against it, you know? Uh, they they you, they flew in on an air on a British airplane back from Syria, you know that they, they 
they walked right back in, that they organized on the internet, built by, you know, the government, you know, and, and, and the establishment, you know, and they just organize on the internet and they're welcome, you know, they have, a, there's an entire, you know, Islamic community that, you know, uh, there's, a, there, forget the Islamic community, you have ISIS soldiers that came back. It has nothing to do with the Islamic community. It's like, ISIS soldiers just went to Syria, fought for a while, fought British troops, and they came back. And they, you know, use the internet. They use the, they use. It's a complete asymmetric threat using the infrastructure of, you know, Europe. You know, and it's not just Britain. It's, you know, all the European countries have the same problem. And so, asymmetric warfare, you know, against carriers, it's the same thing. Missiles are relatively cheap compared to building a carrier, you know. And they're going to build another. The the in two, next year the 2018, they're starting to build the new, a, a new uh, Ford class carrier that will be the replacement for this, be the next USS Enterprise. You know, so another $12 billion of money that we don't have, assuming that the budget doesn't go broke. Um, and uh, so today, other news today, <laughs> um, cool, the cryptocurrencies has gone ballistic, you know, lately, but it crashed today. And uh, the exchange was down all day, one of them. There's basically two exchanges that I know of, and I'm just like a newbie researching into this. Uh, I'm still a gold and silver guy. I haven't bought any cryptocurrencies, but uh, Coinbase uh, exchange was down all day. And the speculation is it was just, they shut, it, it said on their website, um, uh, uh, you know, closed, site closed for maintenance. But it wasn't closed for maintenance. It was closed because the price was really low, and and they wanted to buy a bunch. You know, the speculation is they just wanted Coinbase, the company wanted to buy a bunch of Bitcoin at because it went down from like three thousand dollars of coin to like twenty four hundred or something. You know, overnight, and so they just wanted to buy a bunch now and then sell it later because they figure the price is going to go up. So they didn't want everybody else buying it. They wanted to grab as much as they could. You know. Uh, so, uh, but that's not illegal because there's no regulations for Bitcoin, <laughs> you know? Yep. <laughs> so they didn't do anything illegal by shutting it down, but nobody could check into their accounts, see what, you know, the price was. Uh, Gemini was open. That's the other uh, exchange that I know of that you could actually transfer money to and from a bank into. Um, not in my state in particular, but most of the U.S. states you can. Gemini and uh, Coinbase. And I don't have an account with uh, you know either of those, and because um, uh, it's like you can't do it in Hawaii. I mean, I'll lie about where I live, but my bank is in Hawaii. So uh, anyway, <laughs> um, so that was pretty interesting, and it's just uh, what was also interesting is that Putin had a meeting, I think yesterday, with the uh, founder of Ethereum, which is another one of the cryptocurrencies. Uh, and uh, I think that was over 300 a coin, uh, and um, they want to create a Russian national currency, a, na a national cryptocurrency, and if they're the first nation to actually have their own cryptocurrency, that is going to be like, they could actually, you know, supplant the dollar if everybody piles into it all at once uh, as the first nation with a cryptocurrency that's actually, you know, government fiat cryptocurrency, which is almost a contradiction in terms, but it's crazy, you know. Um, government fiat cryptocurrency. Well, basically, it'd be based on Ethereum, you know. So uh, so he had a meeting with the guy who founded it. I uh, can't remember his name. And uh, meanwhile, in Russia, they arrested the, the guy who's running against Putin in the next election. So, <laughs> you know, what a, it, the world is crazy. Um, so, you know, um, that's that's like one of those reasons why you, you do all your prepping and stuff and buy water filters and stuff like that. Because, you know, who knows which way this crazy world is going to go next. Um, yep. I just don't want to be one of those people that my... I have to look at my granddaughter or my husband or my kids and tell them, sorry, I don't have anything to feed you. Sorry, I don't have a way to get water. Sorry, you know, 
don't have a way to protect us. Yeah, well, uh, it's a crazy world. Um, do, do, does your well, by the way, have a, have a solar pump or some way to pump when if the electricity goes out? We we don't at this time uh, because we live in western Oklahoma where there's plenty of sun and plenty of wind. I'm trying to get my husband to oh yeah, wind power cave in on a um, yeah because we're surrounded by wind turbines all around our house. Yep. We just didn't get lucky enough to to warrant getting one on our land. It makes me so mad, but anyway, because we could have got some profit off of that. But you know, um, if oil prices go up, if oil prices spike again, you still could. You know, right now they're going down and not up. But yeah, well, it'll happen. It always does. It just you know takes some time. The Oil fields picking up a little bit here in western Oklahoma, picking back up a little, not much, but a lot of people just followed it wherever it went. So, um, but my husband works in oil and gas, so um, natural gas compressor mechanic. Um, well, a solar so. power pumps can't cost that much. I mean, just for a well pump. I mean, I know they have them for like you know, the, water tanks, but yeah, we have a really deep well. It's like around 200 foot or something like that, or better. I know it's at least 180 some feet. I'm thinking it's 280. So it's really deep. Um, but we do have windmills around here, um, so I'm sure that a wind generator would work well for it. But I, I'd need to talk to an expert about that to know exactly how much power we'd need to generate to pull it up that from that deep. So, Well, it looks like Firefox uh, totally flaked that on me. <laughs> Let's see if I can. That how, well, I think a lot of people have been having major issues with their internet and stuff. Yeah, I wonder if there's any cyber attacks going down uh, across. I, I saw somebody say that some, you know, I, you know, it's like if they were attacking the electric grid or something, you know, okay, but you know, who knows? It, we live in a cyber era with cyber warfare, and you know, I don't know if there's too many eggs in one basket as far as aircraft carriers go, uh, but um, I mean, I think at World War II. Maybe aircraft carriers were a little more expendable than they are now. I mean, like, you know, like when when the Lexington was sunk, you know, uh, in all, uh, in the Battle of uh, Coral Sea. Um, because America could mass produce inexpensive carriers, but these ones aren't inexpensive. <laughs> um, and uh, so... Uh, it, it's it's basically you know uh, the whole, that's the whole thing about cyber warfare too. It's like asymmetric warfare. You know, some guys in a room for you know can take down an electric gear grid and uh, you know totally you know mess up uh, like uh, you know not just the power grid but the internet the, and some you know some stock exchanges or you know hack they've hacked crypto exchanges before. Uh, too, you know, so um, they haven't hacked the currency itself. That's been so far proved unhackable with blockchain technology. But, uh, but that's where places like China and places like that artificially cause our dollar value to drop by. No, no, that that's the Federal Reserve doing that. <laughs> Mostly, well, but China they, does too because China wants their. They don't want the dollar to drop. They they want their currency to drop. <laughs> they're working on that, but right now they're dealing with their. That we we have a debt problem, but so does China. They have a huge debt problem. You know? Oh yeah, they do. But but that's why they have massive malls in like cities that no one lives in that they've built to try to artificially try to pump up what they're. You know they're. Well, they just overbuilt their infrastructure and you know realized it, it was built all on debt. You know, it's a it's the whole oh. world. No, they've admitted that they they just to falsely inflate their economy. That's why you know that's you are so right. Let me tell you why you're right. I mean, you know, 
even when the Soviet Union was crumbling. If you listen to their numbers, it was perfect. They, everybody had food, everybody was working, everything was perfect, but the numbers were all bullshit. And what do you think the Fed is doing yeah. with the U.S. dollar? The, the unemployment rate is 4.2. Bullshit. You know, if people stop looking for work and just get disgusted and give up, you know, they're no longer counted in the statistics. You know, uh, if their job is shipped overseas, they're no longer counted in the statistics. You know, they, they, these are a bunch of phony numbers, just like the Soviet Union had when the thing collapsed, you know. And uh, the, that I think I mentioned last week, Banco Popular, they went crying to the ECB for liquidity because they didn't have any money. So the ECB basically seized their stock and, and said, your stock is worthless. Your bank is about to go bankrupt or something to that effect. And, you know, there was a bank run. So they just said they sold it for one euro for all their stock to another bank. And, you know, they, they said, here, you take over. And uh, so a different bank, bank sound there or something to, you know, bought it for one euro. And that was the sixth largest bank in Spain. And now the eighth largest bank has a, has a problem. And Italy is like propping up its own worthless bank, you know, banks with all their, you know, loans on, you know, non-performing loans. It's so, you know, I don't know what will happen as far as, but, you know, Mario Draghi, the head of the ECB, has said uh, uh, it's, he, he, the, the euro is irrevocable. It just said, it's just that the, the banks are failing and everybody wants out of the EU. Uh, at this point, at least the populations do. I mean, you know, and I don't know what was happening in England, you know, uh, if they if people didn't like Theresa May, I mean, and the, you know their alternative is Corbyn, and and he's like, I mean, boy, he he hates President Trump with a passion, but you know whatever. Um, it's it's you know, and those are like best friends in the world. So, <laughs> <sighs> and hey, I was on the Daily Gun Show today. I mean, I was I was just in the text chat, and some you know guy came on, you know. Denying that, say, you know, denying that the Holocaust ever happened and Hitler was a good guy and all that stuff in the text chat, and then he stole my channel name and he he just he, he stole my he didn't steal my channel he, he like duped my channel name and and started posting like you know he took my art work which is why I changed my avatar today to something else because he stole my old picture of me running that with the shotgun that said straight out of gun channels and so I just yeah. changed the avatar. Because uh, yeah, he, he was posting Nazi stuff and you know uh, propaganda, kind of, you know, and they they tried to block him, but they didn't seem to have very. Dana wasn't on the top of his game on blocking today, or the other guy was better. So you know, uh, sounds like you have a fan. I don't care, you know. I mean, I'm used to it. Like I, I think I just said on my last show, you know. I got some guy from Iran in, a, in, a, in an Iranian, uh, you know, combat uniform, you know, s sent me, I got an email that through like my YouTube channel that he wished death upon me or something, you know, and I was like, well, bring it, you know, please let, you know, come on over and, and you know, to try and take me out. You know, <laughs> I'd like to take a shot at you, you know, in back if you want to do something like that. But it's like, you know, uh, I'm used to it, you know. It's not like, you know, people who are Jewish and Holocaust survivors <laughs> aren't used to being, you know, you know, having a certain amount of hate thrown at us from, you know, Nazis. So it's nothing new. Just that now we get to shoot back. <laughs> <laughs> oh, only making that mistake once in history of giving up my guns, huh? <laughs> When, when did you, when did you give up your gun? I mean, uh, well, I'm talking about the Jewish people. Uh, well, my family was in Poland when the the like, Germans overran, you know, the whole country and and right. But I'm saying learning from history and the Jewish heritage. Yeah, well, it's a crazy world, and you know. Qatar is being banned uh, by all the its its nations around it because it's playing both sides against the middle. That it's, they had a food panic in Qatar. They're almost the Qatar has to be like the richest country on the planet, and, you know, 
uh, per capita because of their oil and and because they play both sides against the middle. They're they're fr they you know deal with ISIS. They deal with Iran. They have a base from the United States, a military base from the U.S., and they have a military base for the Iranians all in their country. And they are so rich, but because of all the countries around it, because they're the home to Al Jazeera, the Saudis have been pissed at them for years because Al Jazeera always, you know, gives the Saudi royal family shit uh, on their broadcast. So uh, this wasn't the first time they threatened to blockade it, but this time they actually did it. And so there was a food panic and all this stuff in the richest country in the world. So the, the Iran, Iran is flying in food. <laughs> they can afford it over there, you know. Um, but the ships are, they're not allowing any ships, container ships, to deliver anything or export anything from Qatar. So, um, you know, it's, uh, that, it, I just thought it was, you know, out of all the countries in the world for there to be a food panic, you know, that's like the richest country on the planet and they're having a food panic. <laughs> you know, um, and um, so yeah, I guess the camel milk will have to come from that. They do. There are camel milk farms in Saudi Arabia. I know for a fact. Uh, it's people like that over there in um, in Arabia. So um, it's an interesting world we live in. You know. I'm gonna see if I can get Firefox to work again. Let's give it a try. See if I can get more than. Okay. Well, you know, um, somebody's talking about uh, Cycle Camp over on Gun Channels is talking about electric money is crap. Food, guns, and ammo will rule. And I said, "Yep, I'm all about the tangible supplies." Well, yeah, but if 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 cryptocurrency goes to a million, it, I don't know if it's crap. You know, it's. It's basically fiat money is crap, you know. Uh, fiat currency has nothing behind it at all, and people and it's controlled by the government and the Federal Reserve. People want to get out of fiat currency, and that and because they don't want to be, they want they, they don't want to be a victim to the banks, you know, like Banco Popular shut down. You know, most people think you earn your money, you make your money, do the best you can, and you stick it in a bank, you know. But the banks can shut down; they can go out of business. Just look what happened in the, Europe, and it's like here's the problem. Here's the problem, and here's why. For a little while, cryptocurrency appears to be working for now, um, and why banks aren't. Just you're in a crowded theater, and somebody yells "fire," and everybody heads to the exit at the same time. What do you think happens at the door? <laughs> well, somebody's gonna get a trampled because <laughs> yeah. not everybody can be able to get out yeah you're not everybody in a bank not everybody's going to be able to get their money out and you know oh you say okay the bank is insured by the fdic let's say there's a major bank panic in the united states everybody heads for the exit well you don't have to worry because it's insured by the fdic right well imagine everybody in america calling up the fdic and wanting money for their bank account how many people do you think they have working there that could handle such a thing? No, how much money do you actually think they have there? It's not enough. It's like 0.5% of the total deposit. And, and there's not enough. If everybody called, you would be on hold for eternity trying to get your money out of uh, the FDIC for your bank. If everybody runs for the exit all at once. And for every dollar in the bank, for every $100 in a bank, there's only really three cents there because of... Um, Fractional reserve lending. So I'll just explain it to you once. Real, I've, I've explained it before, just so people can understand. You know how money is printed, how money is created. You know in a fiat in the system we have today. Um, federal. Uh, well, the tre U.S. Treasury issues a bond for let's say a trillion dollars. There's an auction, the open market system. is what it's called. And the banks, all the banks show up and say, "Okay, we'll pay one trillion dollars for that bond." from the U.S. Treasury. They take that one trillion bond, they run immediately to the Federal Reserve, which will pay them immediately like 3% more than they just paid an hour ago. <laughs> and the Federal Reserve issues them a check out of an account with no money in it. <laughs> and because it's from the Federal Reserve, 
they create banking currency for one trillion dollars in their bank. They take that money, and they and that is what they you know give loans off of, off for credit cards from, and then the then we have this other thing. So you have this thing called banking currency. When if if you somebody gets paid to you know, takes out a loan for a house, let's say, which is common, you know, people take a loan to buy a home to live in that they like and they take out a huge loan and so that money they they is given to somebody that person takes them that check to a bank let's say it's five hundred thousand dollars somebody gets a five hundred thousand dollar check for a piece of property goes to a bank deposits the money in their account and they are now a creditor to the bank for five hundred thousand dollars the bank takes that money and lends it out yep <laughs> they they lend it out. Oh, well, credit derivative default swaps. You know that was when they took all the bad loans, put them into something called a some kind of security that they sold to banks. You know overseas and banks that got stuck with that. You know that that's why they needed the trouble the TARP troubled asset. Uh, you know something or other uh, to try and bail out all the bad loans um, and. So, but the whole thing is that is a cycle of creating bank money that is just out of thin air. And so, you know, um, and you could look at Venezuela, but, you know, and, and see how bad things can get. Um, it's funny, they have, they're, they're finally approving some Venezuela cryptocurrency called monkey coin. <laughs> I would not touch that with a 10 foot pole. But you know it's better than the Bolivar. Anything's better than the Bolivar in Venezuela. But so um, when you understand that there's an unlimited amount of currency that can, is created by the U.S. government, but cryptocurrency, the technology is capped how many coins there can be, and it, you can text it from one phone. You can have it on a piece of paper. You can have it on your cell phone, and you don't have to go through a bank. So you can do an international transaction. Like somebody was saying earlier, they want to buy an aircraft carrier or hovercraft. Well, okay, you could do it with Bitcoin and not have to go through a bank. So you don't draw the attention of the government. You don't get taxed. And, and, and the, so you avoid regulations, you avoid government, and you don't have to wait for banks. It's whatever you want to buy. If you want to buy a tanker full of oil, a tanker full of grain, it's instant. You just text them the thing on their cell phone and they've got your Bitcoin and and you've got their, you've got their, uh, uh, whatever you paid for. And uh, so because it's capped and if there's a finite limit to how much Bitcoin there's going to be, when every, when in, in, go back to our movie theater analogy, everybody in the movie theater runs for the exit to buy Bitcoin. There's a limited amount of it. People are hoarding it. it it's going to, it goes, it, that's why it went from, you know, uh, $1,400 a week ago to like over three thirty seven hundred. you know, last week. And it's down to like 2600 It's very volatile. It's risky. There's no doubt. But everybody runs for the exits and starts buying. If they run for, from fiat currency, which they are running from, and people, you know, and because and, nobody wants to be, especially if you're in a country like, you know, China, <laughs> and, and you want some people are, Fiat currency, it's like they want to escape the, 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 the central banking system where, where, you know, like when you're, Mario Draghi says in Europe, the it's president of the European Central Bank says the euro is irrevocable. That means he's going to print no, how, however much money it takes to bail out those banks that are failing because it, it, they have like, they're, all the money that they lend out for those homes are, are worth you know, people aren't paying, the, the loans are, are non-paying. People can't pay it. You know, they've walked away from it or they're just not paying. And, and um, so it, it's, it's basically people want, want to get out of the, this banking system and they, they run to something else. And the only thing they can run to is either gold, silver, which isn't moving, and it's a manipulated market. You know, eventually, you know, maybe the manipulation will stop. I don't know. You know, uh, but... You know, J.P. Morgan would have to stick his hands in his pockets. Now, personally, I'm, I don't have any cryptocurrency. I have gold and silver. But if everybody runs for the exit all at once from the fiat dollars and pulls their money out of the bank, they have a choice between gold and silver or cryptocurrencies. 
and cryptocurrencies are booming. And not that many people will know about it. It's just spreading. I mean, I'm talking to you about it. And I'm telling you there's Cloakcoin, there's Ethereum, there's, uh, uh, um, uh, you know, Bitcoin. And there's a bunch of different cryptocurrencies. There's Ripple, you know. And, and uh, I think that the first country that, that actually has a, has a cryptocurrency will just, you know, it, the whole balance of power of the world could shift, you know, which is why Russia is thinking about it, you know. Uh, and um, that's why they talked to uh, the founder of Ethereum uh, today. Um, and uh, because they can use Ethereum, and it's basically it's a blockchain technology. So it, it's only worth what people say, you know, the, the fiat currency is worth something because the government, you know, says it is. <laughs> and that's it. But that there's an unlimited, they could print an unlimited amount with blockchain technology and there's the, there's a limit of, you know, like for, I don't know what it is for Bitcoin, whether it's 1.1 billion, but there is a finite limit that they're going, that, that, that you know, it is built into the technology that there's, there can only be this many coins, you know, so it's like, you know, people are running to it. And so it can go down just as fast as it goes up. But when everybody runs for the door at the same time, you know, if, if you're trying to get your money out of the bank, good luck. You know, and that's what happened today at um, one of the uh, cryptocurrency exchanges. It, it, they, they just shut the door and said, we're servicing the website or put something up. Website is down for scheduled maintenance or something non-threatening. <laughs> Hopefully the people who have an account with Coinbase will be able to get back in tomorrow and but uh, I, I, the speculation is that they're just uh, buying uh, all as much Bitcoin as they can but and planning on selling it you know later when the price goes up and so they're they're just adding Bitcoin to their own books because like I said there's a limited amount um, and so I hope that at least explains what's happening you know and I'm not giving anybody any investment advice you know um, like I said I have silver and gold you know and uh, but um, boy, it, it, I can see the appeal of not wanting to be in the banking system uh, because the banks can close. Uh, Bitcoin you can keep on your cell phone. You don't have to keep it on the exchanges. Um, a lot of people do uh, because you know they may want to trade for other types of currency, other types of coin. And uh, with with Coinbase, they have like a Mastercard, you know, a, like not a Mastercard, a Visa called Shift Card. And you could just, you know, pay for things with out of your crypto, the value of your cryptocurrency account through their little Visa card deal. Um, I don't know too much about Gemini. They're supposed to have better customer service, but I, it's another exchange. So if anybody's interested, you know, you know, you're you're use at your own risk. I, I'm not saying anything about it. I don't, I don't, I don't own any cryptocurrencies myself, but I sure I'm keeping up on the news. Um, and uh, so I won't say that it's crap. You know, it, it could go significantly higher and it could go significantly lower. I don't know. I don't have a crystal ball, but um, I know that it's the, mar the markets aren't manipulated in the way that the dollars are. They can open and close their exchanges, you know, because there's only two, you know, that I know of, Gemini. And there's a lot, few overseas, but in the U.S., there's Gemini and Coinbase. Uh, and... But, you know, like I said, I only own silver and gold, don't own any of that stuff. Um, so, but the one reason I don't is because uh, Hawaii's laws kind of made it uh, impossible. They, they all pulled out of Hawaii because of the state laws that they passed, uh, may, you know, may basically discouraging. Well, Hawaii has so many dumb state laws, and they just raised our taxes because the county is broke, you know, so... <laughs> What else is new? The property taxes went up 6.5% because the county's broke. Well, I guess you don't have to worry about getting any tax money out of you since you're not going to buy any new ones because of the uh, backdoor list. Which backdoor list? The one you have to sign up for if you want to buy a gun. Oh, guns. I was thought you were talking about real estate. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the gun laws suck. Uh, as far as that, yeah, it's the wrap back list that you're talking about. Yeah, well, you know, maybe eventually that law will get, you know, repealed if, if through the court system, because I don't think it's definitely, 
and but it, you know it's definitely against the 1986 contradicts the federal law, the 1986 Firearms Act, but, you know, the state attorney general here, you know, he, he's one of the people that sued the president over immigration or something, so we're still waiting for that one to go through to the Supreme Court <laughs> from the ninth. You know, the ninth, I can't wait till they break that thing up. It's been a pain in everybody's, especially Second Amendment people's side for so long. Um, but, um, yeah, I, I understand the, the, you know, hey, I like physical stuff too, you know, but I, that doesn't mean if, if Bitcoin goes to a million dollars a coin, I wouldn't want to own some, you know, uh, who knows if everybody runs for the, the Bitcoin door to get in at the same time, it'll, it'll be like every, the same thing will happen as people trying to get out of the theater <laughs> from the banks, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's going to be crazy. Uh, so I can't, it's really, you know, you, everybody wants to make the right call for their family. And, uh, so I would say don't necessarily, you know, uh, uh, close your mind to just cryptocurrencies. It's a blockchain technology. Just learn about it. All I could tell anybody is really to just learn, get all the knowledge you can. Uh, it's out there if you look for it. Um, and uh, just take everything with a grain of salt. There's nothing wrong with Bitcoin. It's blockchain, blockchain technology. It's, it seems to be working great, uh, you know, in, in a lot of ways. Um, and uh, the, there's one called Cloak Coin that hasn't gone up. That's still reasonable priced, but the, you know, like three dollars a coin. I don't know what it is. I haven't checked it in a few days. So, uh, and the way things have been going crazy, but it's got this. Uh, it, it, it is. It actually uh, is uh, harder to trace. Uh, so um, it uses this, some Enigma coding technology. Uh, and it, and like it, send, it sends it the way BitChain is mined, it goes to like three possible different mining sources, and only one of them actually mines it. You know, it's, they, they invented some new you know, way to make it untraceable, uh, you know, which Bitcoin is traceable. In spite of the rumors, Bitcoin is completely traceable, but Coke coin, not so much. But, you know, like I said, uh, there's learning is free, you know, just takes your time. You know, what you do with the knowledge is up to you. Um, so any new gun or ammo stuff today? I know, you, Jess, you said you got some AR buffer or something last, yeah, or a couple days ago or something, was it? Yeah, I bought a heavy buffer from uh, heavybuffers.com for uh, my AR-10. Heavybuffers.com? Yeah. Never heard of them. Uh, I'm also known as Slash's Heavy Buffers. So, you bought it two days ago? Um, I received it about two days ago. Oh, I got it on uh, Saturday, I think. How much did it run? Yeah. Uh, $125, I think it was. It's a 10 ounce uh, buffer made out of uh, 303 stainless. 303 stainless. I'm not too familiar with that one. Just an alloy. So I guess the stock one's like five and a half ounces. This new buffer is 10 and a half ounces. Why would you want a heavier buffer? Um, this should help with the uh, recoil a little bit since it seems to be uh, slamming the buffer to the back of the actual tube. This might actually prevent it from bottoming out on the actual buffer tube, soften up the recoil a little bit. Okay, yeah, usually people like lighter parts, not heavier parts, but if it helps with the recoil. It seems it seems to have like a, a sharp blow to it when it goes off instead of a, a nice push. Okay. Ah. So... Oily, you, you probably haven't done any gun stuff. You've been working on your bathroom remodel. <laughs> and <laughs> I saw your, your food your your food prep video. I mean, basically. Um, now that was actually, like, I filmed that like a month ago. But oh. I've been so hooked up, I hadn't been able to. <laughs> I hadn't been able to put it on. I thought, I've got to get some videos uploaded. People are going to think I died or something. So <laughs> I put yeah, that sometimes. On. You just have stuff on your computer that you loaded, but you never edited it together and threw it up on YouTube yet. And, you know, 
Yeah, pretty much. Well, that was on my phone. I I video mostly on my iPhone, but um, I do have a video camera I haven't tried out yet that I I got a few months ago. And oh, I need to what kind? try it out. But what, what, anyway. what kind of camera did you get? God, it's been it's been a while. I can't even remember. That's awful. But I haven't had time to mess with it. I can't remember. I think it's a Sony, but I'm not sure. No, it's not a Sony. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I did some research and I looked up so many of them, and I only had so much money to spend, so I tried to get the best for what I could spend. So hopefully it'll work out all right for me. But if not, I guess I'll just continue to use the iPhone. <laughs> but yeah, we we've got. I've just got a little bit of caulking left to do in the in the bathroom around the vanity and we've got some cabinet doors I just refinished and I put a clear coat on so I'm gonna be putting those in and that's why I stepped away a while ago at the beginning of the show I went and helped my hubby he went and cut down a door that we got from an old farm place and we're putting over the hot water heater closet door and we're going to put it there instead of what we had, which they just had some plywood over it. And yeah, so. my remodeling experience at the bathroom was kind of traumatic. <laughs> That's when I had to go to the emergency room and have surgery. <laughs> but I came back and I had a nice bathroom anyway. Oh my goodness! <laughs> so you wasn't you wasn't even able to be here to oversee it or anything either. I right? oversaw the first part of it. I oversaw about half of it, and then I had to leave the island. <laughs> so. Uh, All right. That would be stressful, but of course we did most of the stuff ourselves. So and no, Jay Watts, I'm not sipping on the honey flavored medicine, quote unquote. I've got some, a container of Glen Liv, the Glen Living here. Uh, I'm gonna give that a shot. Small shot, just enough to make it fun. <laughs> Yeah, so we we did the remodel on the bathroom, so I'm sorry everyone that looks forward to my extensive knowledge on guns tonight <laughs> for not being here. But you're but you're doing your you're doing your bug out bag show on on every Thursday. I mean, it's I mean it's not just a bug out bag show, but I mean that's what the last few have been on, and we got like two thirds of the way through it so far. Yeah, uh, well, no, actually the first episode that we did we got it was before we started the bathroom remodel and we got through a whole entire page of notes and this last time we got through three sections on on a page so that there there's still like 10 other things to discuss just on one page and then I have a portion of another so yeah we've got um uh, we've got a little bit of uh catching up to do but it's fun to learn from each other. I love it. Yeah, we it's called prep the Preppers Powwow, and we do uh, every Thursday, eight Central, nine Eastern. We do uh, a live chat talking about prepping, and we pick a different topic each week. And right now we're on bug out bags. It's kind of it's geared a lot towards people who don't really do prepping or know a lot about prepping or why so but there's always stuff in there that experienced preppers share so it makes it nice because we can still learn from each other and of course if anybody's prepping and they want to you know give their input just come over and uh, give us suggestions over on the side chat or watch it later and it seems comment. like almost everybody has an opinion about bug out bags and especially uh, if they watch my video you know i always get comments about like bug out bag video you know i haven't done it's like a two-year-old video but people are always get very worked up about something whether they disagreed with something or I, they, yeah they, it's funny because people do take it very personally and it's like what we've been teaching over there is that you know you have to it's a personal it's a personalized thing you know you got to figure what the weather's going to be like in your area what the risks are for your area what are you packing for are you packing just to be away for a day or two or are you packing to be away 
depending on the emergency for a week, a month or indefinitely, you know, so everybody's different. Um, I always try to say it's not my style of prepping isn't for like thinking that the end of the world's going to come. Although, you know, I feel like, you know, that it may, I don't know, but, but <laughs> I hope not. My, in my lifetime, but at the same time, it's just more for, we prep more for things like wildfires in our area. We live in tornado alleys, so tornadoes, um, electrical um, storms. We, we prep for, um, yeah, this house has already been hit once by lightning. Thank you very much. Um, before we moved here. Um, we plan for ice storms because we'll be, that's one of the biggest things. We'll be out of electric for for so long. But most of that stuff, that we can stay home. We have a tornado shelter and stuff, but it's nice to have a bag to be able to grab and go if there's a wildfire coming towards us or something like that. So, ah, I was thinking I should buy a box of matzo. I, was, I, I watched the, you know, I think they had like a, a one of the... A, on one of the independent film channel had channel on cable had the uh, uh, the uh, updated version of Exodus where uh, that Christian Bale plays Moses and leads his people across the desert with the you know Egyptians chasing him and I was like boy I bet they it'd be like cool if they had a bug out bag I wonder what Moses's bug out bag looked like you know <laughs> well you know they got tired of eating the matzo the manna <laughs> that the Lord sent down because they griped about it. And so yeah, they probably would have liked to have had something packed <laughs> and stuff. So yeah, I, the way I feel is, you know, I'd rather Moses said, it. "Let my people go," but you know, the Pharaoh said, "Oh, Pharaoh," she said, "Okay, I, would you like to buy some bug out bags?" <laughs> <laughs> Instead of no, you know, he should have cornered the market on bug out bags and made something instead of doing what he did. Uh, <sighs> yeah, but you know, I mean. Even back, you look at like our grandparents, they in depression times, it was just normal to be, live as thriftily as possible, to put back, to, to you know, try to be as self-sufficient as possible. Well, you know, when my parents had to bug out, my grandparents had to bug out after Germans had overrun Poland uh, and they had to bug out to Russia. I mean, their bug out bag was, was just bed sheets. And they and basically people I had asked my grandfather to help take them across the Russian border because uh, he kind of knew the area and helped kind of be their guide, but he didn't want to charge them anything for that. So he said, "Okay, I'll take you across. Just you know, here's here's a bed here's a bed sheet with my stuff. Please carry it, and I'll if you follow me. You know, I'll take you across out of out of you know German occupied Poland." And, and so naturally, everybody that was Jewish and some people that weren't just wanted to get the hell out of you know Warsaw. And um, uh, so he, you know, they snuck people across the border, and and uh, uh, when the Russian border guards actually caught somebody carrying, you know, he, my grandfather ran up to the border guard, and says, "Wait, it's okay. He's carrying my stuff." <laughs> <It's> a... <laughs> and then they asked my grandmother, "Well, you know, at one point, you know, they caught all the people sneaking across the border. The Russian border guards didn't. So they asked. They said, okay." You know, you, you have a choice. You can either go back, you know, to Germany. There's no more Poland. It's Germany over there. You go back to Paul, you know, to where you came from. Or, we'll, if you want, you can stay and we'll let you become Russian citizens. So my grandmother stands up in front of all these Russian border guard, basically the army, and says, but I don't want to be a Russian. <laughs> so that's when they all got sent to a labor camp in Siberia as <laughs> refugees instead yeah. you know? <laughs> so uh, but it was funny I and mean, yeah it was terrible but yeah you know, so the bug out bag was just literally bed sheets you know with stuff in them you know and I guess in a pinch that would have to do uh, but you know some people put a lot of thought and effort into you know what a bug out bag would be um, you know and uh, I put a lot of stuff in mine and I hope I never have to use it uh, but I mean this island's so big, I don't, I don't know where I could bug out to, you know, without a boat. <laughs> so, except just up the mountain. Got to say, know. hey to Rick. Is your six covered? He's out there. Hey, Rick. Oh, hey. 
Yeah, I saw him doing some handgun drills on some of his recent videos. I don't necessarily comment on every video, but I try and watch. I, ha I have subscribed to so many damn people on my channel, I can't watch everything in the feed, but I know he was doing some handgun drills. Um, uh, oh, it was, the, it, was the, it was the mag reloading one recently that he posted. Um, see how, many, how fast he could reload and drop a mag. I didn't completely understand the point of that drill, other than just practice reloading it quick. Um, getting the uh, body uh, muscle memory down for that. Um, yep, muscle memory is very important. It's like knowing how to, like the kids that text like a, a bajillion miles an hour, because they text so much, they they have that muscle memory down. If anybody out there wants a link to hop on in, you know, add add, add something to the chat. I, I think I covered. I, I, I'm going to go check to see what I said this chat was supposed to be about. <laughs> oh, you still got Dennis Rodman yet. Oh, I, didn't I mention him earlier? Yeah, he's he's going to um, uh, uh, North Korea. He's on a plane there now. Uh, so uh, Tuesday, uh, I don't know, it's still Monday here in Hawaii, but uh, if it's to the international dateline, it might be Tuesday already in North Korea. I don't know. <laughs> he might be there. The NBA has landed. That's our only hope to save us from World War III is Dennis Rodman. <laughs> I think the just... last person from the United States that actually went there was Mr. Clinton. No, I think it was that, well, maybe. I don't remember. I haven't been keeping track. But I know Dennis Rodman was there before. Clinton went there to get some, you know. Reporters out. Reporters or somebody out. And then they, you know, North Korea grabbed some more people, you know, so they have more hostages, you know. There's a never-ending supply of. I, I don't. I, if they, if they, if they grab Dennis Rodman and they can keep him, nobody will. Clinton won't go over to get him out. You know, but um, uh, I'm gonna go quick. I think I covered everything, but let's see. So, what is the whole point of Mr. Rodman actually going there? Is that for like public relations, or he just wants to go sightseeing, or? <laughs> Well, I, basically, you know, uh, I saw I saw a quote that in in 2014, Donald Trump said, you know, something about Dennis Rodman going to Korea. And he said he said something about going to Korea, and he thought he was drunk or on drugs when he said it. So, <laughs> and, and that's and that's when he fired him from The Apprentice. So, ah, <laughs> uh, lock and load topics. Uh, crypto exchanges, bank fails. Uh, that was Banco. Uh, I forget which one. Popular in Spain. Um, Oily preppers, new Berkey water filter. Uh, the Nazi troll guy and Second Amendment news. I think I covered everything that I wrote. We were going to talk about. Um, let's see. If I can make it to the external. Let's see. Okay, so let's see. So, is your six covered? Is Dick J. Watterson? And a few other people up there. Um, I think I covered almost everything. <laughs> is this still working? You guys still there? Because my audio just kind of cut out. All right. Well, I think this one is pretty much a wrap. Thanks, everybody, for listening. Thanks uh, in coming in. Um, Check out Gun Channels. It's uh, absolutely free to join. Uh, it doesn't cost anything. Um, there's a lot of Second Amendment people on there. And uh, they do host every Second Matters chat on the second of every month. And they usually try and get a good guest for that show from the uh, professional firearms uh, uh, um, active uh, community, the Second Amendment community, uh, like 
gun. Last last this month on the second was a firearms policy coalition uh, person, um, very knowledgeable. And we got to talk about uh, you know the Pruda case and everything else that they're working on. Um, so like I said, it's free to join gun channels. Check it out, and I'll see you again on uh, next Monday. Thanks for flying with HVS this week again on the Big Island, and uh, catch you all next week. Stay safe.